this video is about efficient frontier. Uh, now in efficient frontier, uh, you can see different graphs like this, the first one and the second one. Uh, we will create these two graphs in this video. Now what is efficient frontier? Efficient frontier means highest expected return for a given level of risk R. Uh, the lowest risk for a given level of expected return. Uh, here we can how we can get this efficient frontier basically the line connecting the portfolios with high, highest expected returns for each level of risk uh, we can get efficient frontier so there is uh, some criticism on uh, because there is some criticism because we are using historical data and that uh, criticism can be tackled through simulation like in the second graph uh, we can get the efficient frontiers through simulation uh, now let's start we have three firms and we have 11 years of data first of all uh, we calculate rate of return by ending minus beginning divided by beginning and multiplied by 100. Uh, so copy uh, this return for next two forms and then after getting this thin symbol double click. So we have these returns uh, because in efficient frontier we need the portfolio return and uh, portfolio risk. Uh, we use uh, matrix multiplication function and portfolio risk can be calculated with the help of this formula we transpose variance covariance matrix multiplied by weights and there are a number of ways to get variance covariance matrix we would use this formula first we calculate deviations and after getting deviations we transport it and multiply it by these deviation divided by number of observations so first of all uh, we are getting uh, deviations for deviations, uh, we need uh, we need every return. So here, I am using the formula for average returns, average. So here, the data, and this is average return of first from then second and third and in the same way every return for annual is free rate now uh, we are getting uh, now we form deviations matrix and how the return each return we subtract every return and just fix it The same way, second return and second average return and fix it. And the third return minus every third return and fix it. Now we are division for the first month and copy it down for the remaining month. Now we have these deviations. Now after getting these deviations, and sum of deviation should be equal to zero, you, you can see that here sum is zero. Now to get this variance covariance matrix, uh, first we allocate the space, but uh, it's for older version of Excel, but uh, in Excel 365, you don't need to allocate the space. So we will use M function then transpose transpose of these deviations and that is multiplied by deviations again and it is divided by number of observation to get number of observation we use any column of these deviations here you can see that uh, we have variance covariance matrix uh, now here we have annual risk free rate we have taken the risk free rate of this column average of 
uh, to convert it into monthly divided by 12. Now, first of all, we calculate portfolio return. For portfolio return, M mult and we transpose the weights. I will write the weights uh, later on. Transpose weights. And it should be multiplied by returns. So here are returns. Shift enter. Uh, let's say we have equal weights 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0.4, and we have uh, these average returns. Here we can use uh, transpose function transpose so our average return is uh, 0.61. Now to get the variance of portfolio, here we have the formula. Here we will use M mult two times because there is two times multiplication and then transpose our weights. Here are the weights, first transpose it and then it should be multiplied by variance covariance matrix. After getting the result of this first multiplication, again this is multiplied by weights. Then shift control enter and then take its under root. So we have risk of portfolio. Now, these are coming because I have already done it. Now, the uh, first objective is minimize our portfolio uh, because we use Excel Salvar in back and there is linear programming model. Uh, now, what is linear programming? Well, we have four basic things in this model. The first is identification of decision variables, then objective functions, constraints, and non-negativity. Now, now, we can ignore the non-negative condition if we are making charts here. Uh, now, here the objective, the first objective is to minimize this uh, uh, standard deviation of portfolio means minimization of risk. So here. Uh, because we need it again and again. So here we will use uh, uh, this standard deviation. Then we should have here portfolio return. And then we have here weights. These are weights and we can use transpose function as well because here rho, uh, rho weights are row wise and we are here placing weights as column wise. Now, the first objective function to minimize standard deviation of portfolio go to data, then solver, and here reset all, and then the first objective function here, I am moving this uh, standard deviation and then minimize and changing weights. And then the only constraint, the first condition is that sum of weight, first add, and then sum of weight, this one should be equal to one. In first objective function, we have only one constraint, okay, solve here you can see that solver found a solution and now just observe here that weights are now changed this is minimum variance that is 6.4 now we increase the minimum standard deviation so now we increase the risk as a result uh, return of portfolio should be increased and we should have a, a different standard deviation here we would use 6.5 7 and up to 17 uh, here the objective function is to maximize the portfolio return. So it is our second ob objective uh, that maximize uh, our portfolio standard deviation. So again, go to solver. Now change objective function. Objective function is now this one, portfolio return. And now we want to maximize this. Changing variables are same. The first condition is same. Now add the second condition and it is that uh, 
portfolio standard deviation, this one, we want to increase it and it is now is equal to 6.5 here. Now just OK and solve it. Here you can see that this it is now increased because we need this data later on to graph it. So now it is increased to 38%. And the second, now we will repeat it again for again and again for uh, portfolio risk from 7 to 17. You can use different number as well. Now just it is repetition, solver. Now change this condition. And now it is our M16, now 17, so that we are using this one 7 and it is written as M17, then OK, and then solve. OK, and just copy it to down. Now you can observe that here. It is increased to 49%. Uh, we will do in the same way and uh, uh, up to 17. Uh, I have the data I am just copying here. This one 49 and. Because I have already done it now. For example, we have this. Uh, these uh, portfolio return now. Third objective function. It would be never be our objective function, but to get the lower part. Like this one lower part, we need uh, this objective function. So here I uh, want to repeat only for this eight and I will copy the rest of the data because I have already done it. Now go to solver. Now change the objective function. The objective function is sorry same. Uh, change, yes, change, set the objective function and it should be minimized. And now change this condition that is change and it is written in uh, 23. So I am changing it 20. Three. OK. Solve. And you can see that we have this return. Copy it down. And for rest, we have the data. Just we will copy it. Now we have this data. Now in the third. To get a capital market line and the line connecting uh, these returns with respect to the risk level, uh, we need sharp ratio. So the formula for sharp ratio is portfolio return minus risk free rate divided by portfolio risk. So here portfolio return is this one. Minus monthly risk free rate. We will get excess portfolio return and it is divided by portfolio risk. Now our objective is now to maximize this sharp ratio. Now again go to solver. Now at this time change objective set objective this one. And maximize it and changing weights. Uh, the only constant that weight of uh, weight should be equal to one so delete. Uh, this first condition and then solve it. So here you can see that uh, here sharp ratio is 0 0.069. Now to get the capital market line points, we use this formula risk free rate plus sharp ratio multiplied by standard deviation. So here we have the list of standard deviation. So here risk free rate. This is our risk free rate. Just fix it. Then sharp ratio. Again, fix it and multiply it by standard deviation. This one. <clears throat> so drag it down. So this is the data that <clears throat> we require to graph capital market line and uh, standard deviation. Uh, just a minute. Just 
it should be basically here. Uh, capital market line is written here. Again, I will repeat it. Uh, risk free rate, fix it. Plus sharp ratio again, fix it. And multiplied by this standard deviation. So copy it down. And efficient frontier point, copy it here and change to value. Now we have the data. Now copy this data to get the graph. Now we have the data. Now first of all, to get efficient frontier points, use this data that we have obtained through different objective function. Go to insert, then scatter plot. Now these are the points. Now, to get market line, use this data, capital market line, again go to insert, and then recommended chart. Here, yeah, this is the line, and okay. Now, this is your basically market line capital market line. Now to get the graph like this one, first one, this one. So again, select all the data and then go to insert and then recommended chart. Here you can see that and uh, click any point and then right click and here we have the option of trend line. So you can see that it is the same graph that I have shown uh, uh, while uh, in beginning of this lecture. Now the second that uh, we can see that uh, this graph, that how we can get this one. Now it can be obtained through simulation. Now here is the a method of simulation. Uh, I will explain it in my next video. Thank you very much for watching this video.